After its introduction in the early 2010s, the 72 b 3 has pretty much become the Russian main battle tank, becoming the most numerous tank in Russian service. In 2017 the new model was shown, the T-72B3 model 2016, which has later been confirmed to be called T-72B3M with the various sources from the manufacturer. Many consider the tank to be great, but many, myself included, consider the tank to be nothing but a cheap upgrade of a 1980s tank. But with the Russian invasion of Ukraine the tank has seen a lot of action, and a lot, and I do mean a lot, have been lost. In this video we will take a look at some of the problems of this marvel of technology. Keep in mind that when I say T-72B3 in this video, I will usually refer to T-72B3M, unless I specifically mention otherwise, just assume that I am talking about B3M, since the difference between the two is not that big. Ok, so let's quickly skim through the good things. T-72B3 has pretty decent fire control system, when it comes to the gunner. The main gun sight gives gunner access to thermals, either second generation or third generation, depending on the SIRS. Most of them would have French Catherine FC, which is second generation. The sight also has the automatic target tracking ability, which is something a lot of modern tanks do not have, believe it or not. Automatic target tracking is essentially a target lock. When the target is moving, you can gauge the automatic tracking and it will simply lock on the target and all you have to do is pull the trigger. The mobility is also decent, especially with the B3M that supposedly received a 1130 horsepower diesel engine, and since the tank weighs around 46 tons, it is pretty mobile. The main gun is also upgraded to A46M5, which gives a lot of improvements like better accuracy and improved durability. Also gives access to more modern ammunition, which is not really relevant right now. But that is pretty much where the good things end. Now let's get into the more interesting stuff, the problems. Let's start with the fire control system. As already discussed, the main gun sight is pretty decent, but the problem is that it is mounted instead of the old night vision sight that was meant to be used temporarily during the night, and as such it is uncomfortable to use because it is mounted to the left, so the gunner has to lean left to use it. The main problem is that they kept the old C-72B sight in front of the gunner, mainly because a lot of the controls are still on the site and would require them to not only make the new site, but also integrate all kinds of things into it that are already integrated into the old site. This is, of course, a cheap solution. Tanks like T-90M have completely new site and the old site of the old T-90 tanks is completely removed, but T-90M is a much more complex and expensive machine. Now, probably the worst part of the fire control system is the commander station. Commander of T-72B3 only has access to the old site and cupola from the T-72B, which has a lot of problems when it compared to modern systems. First, and the most important thing, the site of the commander is not stabilized at all. This makes it very hard to use on the move, and even though the commander does have an option to override the turret, it would be pretty hard to do while on the move, hence why this tank is considered by many to not have a full hunter killer capability. Another problem is that, on top of not being stabilized, the site has no thermal imager, just day channel and night vision channel, second generation night vision and that, which still requires an infrared searchlight to work properly, hence why you can still see the searchlight mounted on top of the commander's cupola on the T-72B3 tanks. Also, having had an opportunity to sit in the commander station of a T-72, I can tell you that the visibility is not the best and the commander's sight is mounted instead of a periscope, so you don't really have a good situational awareness to the direct front, because the sight is magnified and on top of that does not have a particularly great field of view. Coupled with the not so great periscope distribution, yeah, the visibility is not that good. What they did on T-90M is much better. The commander's sight is completely separated from the cupola and all around periscopes give a much better field of view. The commander can view what the gunner sees through a monitor that displays the thermal picture of the main gun sight. He can also take full control of the turret and the main gun if need be. There is also one thing that needs to be addressed. It's the so-called T-72B4. Of course, it is not its real name, but the media dubbed it like that. This tank was used by Russians once on the tank biathlon competition, and 
One major point about it is the presence of the panoramic sight for the commander with integrated thermals. The sight is also fully stabilized. And apparently this tank has been seen in Ukraine, with some videos apparently posted by the crew. This tank, of course, is an exception, but it is a prime example of what should have been done. Now, the protection. Well, the tank has a lot of problems there too. The biggest issue are the gaps between the ERA blocks. They made the cheapest possible mounting system and called it a day. I have no idea why was it so hard to make a mounting system that would better close the gaps between the blocks. All they had to do was make it slightly spaced away from the turret on some spots, but that was too hard apparently. And now they are left with this abomination of the ERA placement. The hull is no better. The top of the hull is completely naked, no ERA on this area, which makes it very vulnerable to the anti-tank threats, both tank-fired kinetic energy projectiles and heat rockets and missiles, because Contact 5, the ERA used in the tank, is meant to degrade the penetration of both. In fact, I believe that the bigger portion of front armor is not covered by any ERA than it is. Side armor is also problematic. On B3M the turret at least has big ERA blocks, but the hull side skirts also suffer from the gap syndrome. There are so many gaps between the plates, it is unbelievable. One could argue that they maybe tried to save weight. But if that is the case, why did they develop the bagged ERA to be mounted on top of those side skirts? The biggest problem is that these side skirts are also mounted on T90M tanks. Hence why I keep saying in my videos that the T90M is just as vulnerable as T72B3. Regular T72B3 is even worse. This tank only has three square plates mounted on the one third of the hull side. The rest is completely naked and can be easily hit and penetrated by any threat. Even World War II rocket launchers would have no problem penetrating that. And I think it is redundant to talk about the ammunition carousel. And last but not the least, the reverse speed. This is, in my opinion, one of the biggest problems of this tank. The reverse speed is just 4 km per hour, which is absolutely horrible. This means that escaping deadly situations is very unlikely, and changing positions after firing is also problematic, because you can essentially only go forward. Hence why on so many videos of Russian tanks, we see them not moving at all. In comparison, most NATO tanks have around 30 km per hour reverse speed, which is much better. And Russian T-80 tanks also have superior reverse speed, at around 10 km per hour, which is not as good as NATO tanks, but is still much better. And according to a Russian T-80 BVM tanker, the superior reverse speed made them able to win a tank battle against Ukrainian T-64s, since T-64 also has 4 km per hour reverse speed. Don't know if that is entirely true, but if Russians themselves are pushing that narrative, then you know the reverse speed is important. Now, is T-72B3 a bad tank? Well, I wouldn't really say it is bad, I would rather say that it is just good enough. It is a cheap modernization. Russia needed it to fill the gap of its aging tank fleet. Back when T-72B3 came out, Russia had only a couple of hundred tanks with thermal sights, mainly T-90A tanks and some T-80U tanks, while NATO had thousands. This tank made them close the gap significantly in around 10 years which is a big plus. On top of that, imagine if they wasted money on tanks that are around the level of T-90M. And after seeing so many abandoned T-72B3 tanks, I believe maybe it is better they haven't spent more money on them. But that would be all. If you like my content, you can consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.